CataractCoach.com. Understanding horizontal chop. Remember, the chopper is hooked around the lens equator in the caps or bag here. Now, here's the Rexus. Good size. Don't make a baby Rexus. It'll only make horizontal chop tougher. So remember, that chopper is going to go under the Rexus and then around the lens equator. So finger probe going in the eye first, occluding it. Buzz, buzz, buzz into the nucleus. Now retract your foot to position two so you have high vacuum. Chopper goes around the lens equator, under the Rexus. Bring the two instruments together, and when they're together like this, now switch 90 degrees and pull apart. And that propagates the chop all the way through. Very nicely done. Let's watch again. Get this thing rotated here. Faco probe is going to be buzzed into the nucleus. Chopper is going to go around the equator of the lens, under the rexus. Bring the two instruments together, and then propagate the chop by splitting it apart. Beautifully done here. You can definitely learn this technique. Now, that first quadrant can be brought up out of the capsule bag and then just chopped here, kind of at the iris plane. And that looks like a very nice technique too. Just stay away from the endothelium. And so chopping it into smaller pieces is a pretty good density in this nucleus. Not a soft lens at all. So once you get that first quadrant, that gives you a lot more working room. So that's a nice idea too. Take out the first quadrant and then you can resume chopping. You can see not much cortex remaining there. Rotate that nucleus again, watch carefully. Buzz in with the phago probe. A get occlusion, chopper around the equator, and bring the instrument towards the phaco tip, and now apart to propagate the chop. And there you got a nice split there. And you can do the same thing again here with this hemi-nucleus, holding it with the vacuum power, and then the chop. This is a horizontal chop. And so on this one, you can use a ball tip chopper. So this chopper here, if you look carefully, has kind of a bulbous tip there. And some people like that because they think it's safer. So when they're near the capsule or bag, they're not going to have as much a risk of damaging it. That's perfectly fine. So, But you can do this with even the traditional Nagahara type choppers. You don't need a ball tip chopper. In fact, I don't recommend one. I don't really use a ball tip chopper. So at the end here, look, chopping up the small pieces looks pretty good. So think about it. Horizontal chop. The chopper is moving horizontally, parallel to the iris. So fake probe holding the nucleus, chopper goes around the equator, chopper's moving from the equator of the capsule bag towards the chopper tip, or phaco tip, then the phaco and the chopper are pulled apart to split it. So horizontal chop, the chopping action is horizontal, again, parallel to the iris plane. Now here with the last piece in the bag, and not much cortex, be careful, don't let that come up. The bag can come up here, so injecting some viscoelastic, probably a smart move, I actually like that, good idea. Good, good surgery, young doctor. I appreciate it. So let's speed up the rest of the case. The rest of this is going to be pretty easy. You can now remove that last bit of lens material. Again, be careful when there's nothing weighing down the capsule bag. If you have unstable fluidics, you can cause the posterior capsule to come forwards. If it touches the uh, phago probe tip, you can pop the capsule, as you know. And so here, a little bit more chopping there. And that looks really nice case will be done soon so horizontal chop again not difficult to learn there is a time constraint though right so when you buzz in with the phaco probe so you go in position one two three zzz, you buzz in the center of the nucleus you get the tip occluded you hear the ding 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 on your machine you retract your foot to position two and you got maybe a window of a second or two or maybe three seconds where you need to accomplish the chop while you still have the vacuum holding power and so what happens is otherwise, if the nucleus has any degree of softness to it, as you have that initial strong holding power, you break that. The seal breaks and the vacuum level will go down. So it'll go, and then it comes down like that. Now you're not holding it so well, and now it's going to be a lot tougher to chop. So you do have that window there. Hey, did I tell you about the cataractcoach.com website? I know you got to check it out. I got so much good information there for you. A free PDF book about learning cataract surgery, including learning cataract, phaco chop, a full cataract coach curriculum series. There's a whole series on how to learn phaco chop. You can certainly do it. And you can sign up for a free daily email. Check out our podcast which is every week. Come on, you know the routine by now. End of the case here, just cleaning up the caps or bag. That looks really nice. Get that lens in, call it a day. Beautifully done case here, anonymous surgeon. So again, horizontal chop. Now you understand it. Last thing here you want to talk about, what are appropriate settings? Think about it. When you buzz in with the phaco probe, you need some sort of energy. So a denser nucleus, let's say at least 50% energy. But the key here is holding power. So you need to have high vacuum. So for most phaco tips, again, it does depend on the tip you're using and the size of it. 
the diameter, but you still want to have high vacuums. You're looking to get vacuum levels of about, at a minimum, 300 millimeters of mercury, even up to four or 500 millimeters of mercury. And you can maintain that vacuum level as you do quadrant removal and do further subchops, and then keep the aspiration flow rate relatively high, at least 35 cc's a minute, so that things happen nicely inside the eye. And again, check out our website and our social media. Thanks for watching. And that podcast, wow, it is so, so good. You got to see.